Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at the Compaq DeskPro XE466 which is my only 486 desktop that I own. And today we're going to be taking a look at a IDE to SD card adapter, this one. Ordered this from China because that's where all of these weird things come from. Also ordered an SD card. It's pretty hard to find any capacity less than 8 to 16 gigabytes these days. But I found this uh, 4 gigabyte class 4 SD card. It's pretty bad, but uh, we'll see if we can put it in this machine. Alright, so let's get started. The reason I am going for an SD card instead of a compact flash card is because SD cards are a lot more ubiquitous these days. And uh, they're pretty much cheaper as well. And they'll typically perform better for the money too. I mean, compact flash is a really outdated standard. It's really not used that much anymore. It has some really limited use cases still in photography, but that's about it. Well, SD cards are extremely ubiquitous these days. So I decided to spring for that. Right. So here is the inside of the 466. Of course, we still have the socket 2 there with the 486 DX266, which is sadly not really upgradable to anything else except the Pentium overdrives, which uh, cost an arm and a leg. Of course, right there we have the Sound Blaster Vibra 16, and underneath it is an AMD PC Net network adapter that is currently not really uh, usable because, quite frankly, I don't have any. Uh, network equipment I can step down to 10 megabits, at least not that I have hooked up. I do have a 10 megabit hub though, so I'll probably be able to use that to some degree. But for now, we just need to get this IDE ribbon cable off of this drive here, which is I actually forgot, I think it's a 3 gig fireball. Pretty good drive. It's been reliable for me. So, yeah, I've tried a compact flash to IDE adapter with this machine, but uh, I've not been successful with that at all. The machine wouldn't even post with that thing installed. I hope it's going to be different with this SD adapter though. But uh, I'm not getting my hopes up too much, but I will be able to use this otherwise in my uh, Pentium MMX computer, which does take the compact flash adapter as well. I also got a laptop. Uh, IDE adapter to SD card. So if I ever get another vintage laptop in, or well, I do have a couple, but if I want to, wanted to use an SD card with that, I could. So there's that. I don't think we need to jump or anything, it's just going to be in the master position. The CD-ROM drive is in slave. It's an old drive that I yanked from my iMac G4 because I upgraded that to a DVD RW drive. Uh, a long time ago when I got the machine actually. So there's that. So let's actually put the, well actually I can't put the top back on, but we're gonna put it on its side on top of another computer and uh, hook it up and see what she does. I'm hoping that we can at least uh, make it so that we can actually see what's going on on the uh, hard disk or the SD card, which it is now. The poor machine really looks to be in a very sorry state right now. But uh, I can assure you it isn't. Here's a floppy that we'll boot from. So we'll put that in a drive. There we go. Now we can turn it on. It was already in the turn on position. Okay. Now I need to actually plug it in. I've got really. All right, the machine turns on. That's good. That's already a very good sign because it wouldn't do that with the uh, compact flash adapter. It would not complete post. Shield your ears now. All right. It is now completely silent, wow. 
I mean, there's nothing better than the characteristics of a loud old hard drive spinning around, but the convenience of being able to just take it out pretty easily and put any data you want from a card reader is just way more valuable than that. There we go. Let's see if we can boot from the floppy disk drive. And see if we can make a partition on the drive. This is just an MS-DOS boot disk. These floppies usually take a little while to read. So, there we go. Focus. Apparently autofocus just died. That's interesting. There we go. I want to go back to the A prompt. Ah, uh, not DIR. Ah, uh, F disk. That's what I want. No partitions, non-DOS, 4 gigabytes of space. Cool. Let's make a primary DOS partition. No. no. Right. We need to delete it first. Hold on. Right, one interruption gone. Um, yeah, right. I forgot we first have to actually remove that partition because there is a partition. So we want to remove that one. Uh, yes. Now it should be cleared. We don't want a maximum size for a DOS partition. Uh, let's see. I want my boot drive to be one gigabyte. So we'll have plenty of space to play with. So that's nice. Now we're gonna make an extended DOS partition for our data. Maximum size, that's about two and a half gigs roughly. I want one logical drive at 100% of the size. Maximum space available is 2 gigs. Alright, yeah. Of course, it has a 2 gigabyte partition limit. <laughs> I forgot about that. I don't want an extra partition now. So now we have a C partition and we have something that would have been a D partition otherwise. Okay. It lets me know now that the adapter works, so that's good. There we go. So that will mean that we are now able to actually install and boot DOS from it. That's all I'm going to do for this video, so because I will need some time, of course, to set up the system the way I want it to. I want to have this system booting into DOS and Windows 3.1 because I think that's the most fitting combination for uh, a 486 DX2 with 16 megs of RAM. And it's just uh, really nostalgic to me because that's the first experience of a computer that I had as a kid. That was MS-DOS and Windows 3.1, so that's what I'm going for. It took me a good while to find DOS and Windows 3.1 in Dutch, but luckily WinWorld PC is a thing, and uh, they had everything I needed. So. Kudos to them, really. Okay, there we are. Yes, I want to format C. Thank you. And there is the magic of formatting a flash disk. Mm. So basically, I now have a 486 with an SSD. And this isn't even a Druaga video.
Isn't that just amazing? With the Compact Ghetto Pro <laughs> XE466. And it's taking a little bit longer, of course, to format the D. The D always needs the correct format. Otherwise, the input is not accepted. Right, puns aside, and demonetization aside, <coughs> let's install DOS. All right, DOS is installed. Let's hit the entry key and see if it boots. If it does not, that means that the partition table is still a bit garbled and I'll have to uh, do a quick fix on that. There we go. It's still extremely loud. All right. Yep, as expected. There's always a problem with the f first time we try to boot of one of these. I had the same problem with the uh, compact flash card. It will just completely hang the system. So um, I'll boot to the DOS prompt and we'll see uh, what we can do there. From the floppy disk, of course. Ah, it is booting now. There we go. I decided to skip over the little part where you have to do a little DOS command. Basically, all you have to do at the A prompt is type this. As you can see here. There we go. That's the that's the only command you need to do in order to get a SD card or a compact flash card bootable on one of these machines. And with that, it is working. So that's good. Good result. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one, uh, where we will probably be uh, doing an overview of the system running Windows 3.1 as well.